The creation of nuclear weapons, the most destructive weapons ever made, became a possibility after significant progress in nuclear research during the 1930s. Scientists discovered the secret of nuclear fission reactions using plutonium or uranium. At the advent of World War II, it was feared that Nazi Germany would be first to develop a weapon using this powerful new technology. In response to this, the US invested funds into nuclear weapons technology. By the 16th of July 1945, the first nuclear weapon test, Trinity, was undertaken by the US. Its detonation was equivalent to an explosion of around 20 kilotons of TNT, and its advent marked the beginning of the atomic age. Despite the war in Europe having ceased, the US sought to put an end to the Pacific War and bring World War II to a close. Less than one month after the Trinity test, two cities in Japan and the lives of thousands of their inhabitants had all but been extinguished using the same technology by what was to become known as the atomic or A-bomb. These attacks on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki demonstrated the terrible destructive capabilities of such weapons for all the world to see. The aftermath of World War II saw a breakdown in the relations between the US and the Soviet Union. In the decades that followed, born from terror, came an arms race which fueled the hostilities of the Cold War. These two powerful nations battled to have the most destructive weapons. The seemingly unending arms race reached its peak in 1986. The US and Soviet Union possessed thousands of nuclear weapons between them, which, if all were detonated, would have destroyed the world and annihilated all of its life approximately 25 times over. But the US and Soviet Union were not the sole nuclear weapon states. In 1952, the UK became the first European country to declare that it was a nuclear weapon state and was followed eight years later by France. In the world today, there are nine nuclear weapon states. Of these nine, the US, Russia, the UK, France and China were the declared nuclear weapon states when the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty entered into force. Following the advent of this treaty, Israel, India, North Korea and Pakistan acquired nuclear weapons. North Korea tested a nuclear device in 2006 and declared itself a nuclear weapon state after having previously left the NPT. Ever since the emergence of nuclear weapons, there have been protests against their production, testing and use. These protests have come from both individuals and organisations all over the world. Several treaties have also come into being to limit the aspects of their existence, either for specific states or on a global scale, but none to outlaw the existence of nuclear weapons in their entirety. In 1970, the NPT, Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, became international law and serves as the foundation for the total elimination of nuclear weapons. The objectives of the treaty are to eliminate nuclear weapons, prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons and facilitate the utilisation of nuclear technology for peaceful purposes only. The NPT is the only legally binding document that establishes an obligation for nuclear disarmament. Since the Trinity test in 1945, many nuclear weapon tests have been undertaken by various states. This testing has had a direct effect on the environment local to the test sites and arguably the human population too. As 44 states in the world are believed to have the capacity to develop nuclear weapons, the CTBT, Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, was negotiated in 1996. The purpose of this treaty is to ban nuclear test explosions. However, for this treaty to come into force, the ratification of these 44 states is required. As yet, only 35 of these states have signed and ratified the treaty. 
The first nuclear weapons were considered to act as a deterrent to enemies seeking to attack the nations that possessed them. This is still considered a strong argument in defense of the possession of nuclear weapons throughout the globe. However, it can be deduced, using the Cold War as an example, that there can be no limit to fear. The bomb, Little Boy, that was detonated on Hiroshima had an explosive power equaling 15 kiloton of TNT. Fat Man, which was the bomb detonated on Nagasaki, had an explosive power of approximately 21 kiloton. The effect of these two bombs transcended that of any bombs used in warfare previously. The damage done by nuclear weapons is not limited to the effect of the explosion. Everything at the hypercenter of a nuclear explosion is vaporized by the extreme heat. In Hiroshima, for example, ground temperatures reached nearly 6,000 degrees centigrade. Outwards from here, the effect on life was unprecedented. Pulling my trembling sister, I thought, we need to get out of here. We need to escape to safety. As we walked, we came across a newborn baby at the side of the road, still attached to the umbilical cord. We looked over at the mother, but her entire body was charred and she was dead. Nearby, you could see corpses. You could hear the sizzling sound of their flesh burning. The bodies were burned so badly, you couldn't tell if they were men or women. There were piles of such dead bodies. An estimated 80,000 people were immediately killed. Injuries were caused by severe burns or flying debris. In addition to this, the exposure to such high levels of radiation caused blindness or radiation sickness. The effects of radiation sickness cannot be described as anything other than torture. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, hemorrhaging, bruising, hair loss, bleeding gums, diarrhea, fatigue, mouth and gastrointestinal ulcers, and the depletion of white blood cells, which have their own health implications. Further still from the hypercenter, Nuclear fallout is carried downwind, spreading the effects of exposure to radiation over a greater area. It is for these reasons that the total loss of life is difficult to calculate as some of the effects of exposure to high levels of radiation, such as various strains of cancer, do not manifest in the human body for many years, sometimes even decades. By the end of 1945, an estimated 140,000 of the 250,000 inhabitants had perished as a direct result of the Hiroshima bombing. The attack on Nagasaki resulted in the deaths of 40,000 people immediately. By the end of the year, this estimation had increased to 70,000 people. Nuclear weapons in modern arsenals are considerably more powerful. For example, one of the British Trident nuclear submarines has a total firepower of 24 megaton of TNT. One megaton equals 1,000 kilotons. This means that some of today's 23,300 nuclear weapons have a firepower more than 1,000 times greater than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Surely it is the responsibility of the world's people to ensure that such atrocities cannot ever be repeated. A world free from nuclear weapons can and indeed will be realized. SGI UK is part of Soka Gakkai International a lay Buddhist organization working for sustainable peace through the development of each individual's greatest potential. Jose Toda was Soka Gakkai's second president. He made a solemn declaration in 1957 against the creation and use of nuclear weapons. As weapons that kill indiscriminately, Mr. Toda linked them to the darkest and most deluded parts of the human heart. 
parts that can only be illuminated through heartfelt solidarity between all people, regardless of all apparent differences. Numerous other world leaders have also made the same recognition. John F. Kennedy in 1961 is one example. Daisaku Ikeda is Jose Toda's successor and the current president of the Soka Gakkai International. Through numerous published dialogues and peace proposals to the United Nations, he has worked tirelessly for a world that respects the individual's right to life on the most fundamental level. Therefore, we as a human race must be vigilant that once abolished, nuclear weapons are not replaced with another threat to our existence. If we are to put the era of nuclear terror behind us, we must struggle against the real enemy. That enemy is not nuclear weapons per se, nor is it the states that possess or develop them. The real enemy that we must confront is the ways of thinking that justify nuclear weapons. The readiness to annihilate others when they are seen as a threat or as a hindrance to the realization of our objectives. In his 2006 peace proposal, SGI President Ikeda proposed a decade of action by the world's people towards the abolition of nuclear weapons. To empower people to reject nuclear weapons and to foster solidarity between ordinary citizens around the world, SGI launched the People's Decade Movement in 2007, the 50th anniversary of President Toda's declaration for the abolition of nuclear weapons. Since 2007, SGI has carried out a variety of activities across the world, including public talks and surveys of people's attitudes towards nuclear weapons, as well as a petition that collected over 2 million signatures in Japan supporting a nuclear weapons convention. The movement's webpage can be found at www.peoplesdecade.org and is a valuable resource to become more aware of this threat, how nuclear weapons have affected the lives of survivors and the efforts being made to bring about positive change in this era of fear and deterrence. Collaborating with organizations such as ICANN and the IPPNW, the People's Decade is one in which ordinary people can raise their voice against nuclear weapons, to a point where it cannot simply be ignored by the few in power who perpetuate the existence of these weapons. Efforts to overcome this culture of division and cultural segregation are being made by the SGI all over the world, with activities to foster global solidarity. As part of People's Decade in the United Kingdom, SGI UK has developed relationships with national and local organizations. To commemorate the 50th anniversary of 2nd Soccer Gakkai President Toda's declaration against nuclear weapons, SGI UK's Youth and Student Division opened dialogue with Pugwash, an international organization exchanging views on arms control. Pugwash was co-founded by the late Sir Joseph Rotblatt, the only scientist to abandon the Manhattan Project that sought to develop the first nuclear weapon in World War II. When he launched our program, he was very, very, very aware and his big belief was in the next generation that would bring peace. And he said, at the present time, we live in a culture of violence because we base our security on the threat of the worst type of weapon that scientists can invent. How can we ask the young generation to abide by a culture of peace if they know that this peace is predicated on the existence of WLD. At a local level, SGI UK has also worked with St Bernard's Catholic Grammar School that chose peace as the theme of its Humanities Day in 2011. I'm Ros and I'm the assistant head at St Bernard's. When Rachel came along and mentioned about the exhibition Transforming the Human Spirit from a culture of violence to a culture of peace, I thought that that's our theme this year because it's the sort of thing we've done before but with uh, and it really does build on what we did last year which was looking at conversations and connections and to me it seemed as though finding a way of um, making peace in the world was using conversations and connections so it all seemed to tie in really well and as soon as I saw the exhibition I thought that is going to inspire our young people. This tradition of encouraging young people is one of SGI's core activities, 
with the recognition that youth are our future leaders. Nuclear weapons are something that I feel are just ridiculous um, and something that have no meaning except for negativity in the world. We can destroy the entire world with bombs and I, f I feel that, you know, what's the point in having bombs that can do that? You're having an argument with another country, so you destroy the entire human race. It just doesn't really make sense. I think through dialogue we can help to um, abolish nuclear weapons because we can make people aware of the situation and talk to them about how we can make a difference. Thinking about like the effects nuclear weapons have on other people and like telling other people, you know, just not like lecturing them or anything like that, just telling them that that's what I think and that's the best way to go forward. I think that we have the ability to prove to others that there is a chance to obviously abolish nuclear weapons but it's whether or not we choose to to do this and I think it's it starts with the inner the person themselves and by leading by example we're showing them that it's possible. I just I believe that all nuclear weapons should be abolished and this will be a much more peaceful place. It's all about being the change you want to see this encouragement from President Ikeda can be taken on by each and every one of us in our efforts to recognize and uproot the cause of nuclear weapons, to transform the culture of violence into a culture of peace. It starts with me. It starts with me. Peace through trust. Trust through friendship. Peace through trust. It starts with us.